Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Restaurant Sales Funnel. I'm Jerry Tikoski. So nice to see you again, even though I can't really see you. I'm just imagining those lovely faces watching this. Thank you so much. If this is the first time you've ever been to the Restaurant Sales Funnel show, uh, very welcome for you. Uh, the show is all about helping restaurant owners to create automated marketing systems for their business that will consistently get them new customers every single week and then convert those customers into regular fans that keep coming back and again and again and increasing the lifetime value for your business. Very, very important because the more value you add to the lifetime value of a customer, the more you can spend on getting new customers, which means your business is gonna keep growing and growing and growing. So that's our goal. And today, very special episode. It's all about reviews. I know most restaurants know the importance of reviews. I'm gonna share with you some great tips that are gonna help you to get better reviews and to manage those reviews that aren't so good because they do affect your business. So we'll go through that today. And uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Woohoo! Okay, so here we are. Manage your reviews to increase your sales. Now, we all know the power of reviews. Positive customer reviews are a proven way of increasing sales. It's a fact that 60% of diners read reviews before visiting a restaurant for the first time. So imagine if you have some really bad reviews there. I mean, this is going to have a huge impact on your business. So managing your reviews is the quickest and most economical strategy to increase your revenue. You need to be proactive to manage your customers so that they will write positive reviews for your restaurant. And I'll show you how. But first we need to understand cognitive dissonance, all right? So it's commonly known as post-purchase cognitive dissonance. Right? And that's a term that we give to a state of unease which exists in the customer's mind after ordering a meal from the menu. Now, this could be very simply, you've ordered something and as a waiter's going past, you look at another meal and you think, geez, I, sh I should have ordered that. <laughs> right? So you're already feeling not too uh, comfortable by your order and that creates what we call that cognitive dissonance. All right, so you need to manage your customers' expectations, particularly on social media and your website. And by that, I mean, we need to be careful of what we put on social media or on our website. When we're trying to promote some of the food, we spend a lot of time preparing that food, making sure it looks absolutely perfect. And unfortunately, we just can't duplicate that on a busy night. And this can cause cognitive dissonance, all right? So they say, hang on, I saw this beautiful meal on Instagram, but what I'm looking at looks nothing like that. And it's because the image on Instagram has been worked on for hours, making sure it looks perfect. But on a busy night, you just can't do that. And that will create a negative review for your restaurant. The fact is that happy customers are less likely to leave reviews, while disgruntled customers are more likely to do so. All right, let's see, it's the same old story, all right? If, if someone is really happy with your restaurant, they may tell a few of their friends, but those that are unhappy are gonna tell everyone they ever meet, right? So it's very important that we turn those bad reviews into good reviews. So let's have a look at, we can do that. And we can do that by encouraging contented customers to share their experience with online reviews. So you increase positive promotion around your restaurant that will improve your chances of increasing footfall and sales. Your motto should be under promise over deliver. All right, if you live by that, you are going to get far better positive reviews than you do negative reviews. All right, so under promise over deliver. So how will your customers judge you? Let's go over some really key points that you need to be aware of to get those positive reviews for your restaurant. Okay, location, location, location. That can mean anything to a restaurant. And it can certainly bring a lot of people to your restaurant when you've got a stunning view. But what happens when someone comes to your restaurant, all your best views are already booked up and you end up 
going to another part of the restaurant which quite doesn't have that same view. Well, obviously you're going to have some very, very disappointed customers. And it doesn't matter how great the food is, how great the service is, they're going to be disappointed and they're more likely to leave a really bad review for your restaurant. Another issue could be parking, right? Before people can eat, they have to get there. So make sure that customers are aware of where to park. Now, if you're on a busy street, which is great for footfall, might not be very good for cars to actually try to find a parking near your restaurant. You need to make them aware of, you know, parking problems or offer other solutions because if they've been driving around the block trying to find somewhere to park, they finally find a place, then they have to walk a couple of hundred meters to get to your restaurant. Uh, it's cold, it might be wet. They're not gonna be very happy. And when they get into your restaurant, again, you know, you might be doing everything great in your restaurant, but they're already coming in with a negative attitude. And again, that can lead to a very poor review to your restaurant. What can you do about that? All right, maybe it's valet parking. Maybe it's adding a, you know, having a bus service from a, a, you know, a council car park to your restaurant. But certainly, you know, if there are problems like that, just make them aware that they, you know, they need to come a little bit earlier to get parking, or they can reserve a little parking spot for you. But this is really important that you know you don't want a problem before they get to your restaurant because the rest of the night they're not going to be too happy. It's going to be very hard to turn that around. Cleansiness, of course, this is very, very important, particularly what's happening right now with the COVID-19. Uh, if your restaurant does not look clean, your diners will presume your kitchen probably looks worse. <laughs> okay, we certainly don't want anyone to have that opinion. Even if your kitchen's spotless, if your dining tables look terrible, they're going to assume that things are worse in your, rest, in your kitchen. Now also you want options to cater for all your guests. All right? So you might have a big party coming in and you may again have the greatest seafood uh, choices in, of any other restaurant in, in, the, in your city, but you don't have anything else but seafood. Uh, this is, could be a problem. You might have you know, one person out of a dozen in that group just doesn't like seafood. For whatever reason, they've come along anyway. Maybe it's a birthday celebration and they're hoping to order something that's not seafood. And if you haven't got that, you know, maybe the other 11 people will absolutely rave about your restaurant, but that one person who, you know, doesn't like seafood, there's no alternative, guess what they're going to do? They're going to write a negative review of your restaurant. And that's unfair to you, but that's how it works. So make sure that you can cater to all guests that come to your restaurant. Also make sure you've got a good variety of a price range. Right? Some, of those, some people coming to your restaurants, they're gonna have a limited budget. Others are wanna spend more. Just allow for all those uh, price points to give everyone a, you know, a good choice of what they can choose from your menu. Now, one thing you don't want is a promotion that is, you know, you're paying for to get people to go into your restaurant and it turns out to be a bomb because you're sold out. Now imagine all those people coming in midweek, so on a Wednesday, they want to order those 15 wings for only $9.50 and you've run out. Well, you know, you're doing everything right to try and bring people to your restaurant, but those people have come specifically for that special promotion, it's sold out. How do you think they're gonna feel? Well, they'll let you know but unfortunately they're going to let you know on a bad review. And again, that's going to hurt your sales. So make sure that you've got an alternative. If you run out of your, your special offer, make sure that you give them something alternative that they're going to be happy with. In fact, give them something better because you don't want negative reviews. In fact, if you do solve their problem, you'll probably get a very strong positive review. Make sure you're responsive to special requests. Uh, you know, if they're vegans, uh, how are you going to provide a, a pizza, a vegan pizza, make sure you, you are able to resolve any special requests and deliver that as best as you possibly can. Obviously, some people will come in with some outrageous requests, but do the best you can to make them happy. All right, then do anything to be able to fulfill those requests and that will help you to, to turn a negative review into a very, very positive review for your business. Okay, so what's a brand value proposition that you have for your restaurant? 
You know, is your chef uh, one of the top chefs in your local area? What sort of personality do they have? What's their story? What's the reason why they started the restaurant? Oh, this, is a, this adds value to what you have as a restaurant and it's going to stop a lot of negative reviews for your restaurant. So what's a USP, your unique selling proposition? Is it your breathtaking location? Is it your friendly staff? Or is it just warm towels that you provide after, after a meal? Is it the quality of entertainment in the restaurant? Is it those unique little petty fours that you offer for free when someone has a coffee at your restaurant? Any of these things can really generate really positive reviews for your restaurant at a fairly low cost. The most important thing is what sort of emotions can you generate in your restaurant? Using the ambience and the comfort they have, the feeling they have in your restaurant. Remember, they can order your meals virtually take away or, or deliver to their homes. But the reason they go to your restaurant is to, to feel the emotion of being in your restaurant. All right? They can't get that in their homes. And this is what they want. They're buying emotion. And obviously very important for a restaurant is the quality of the food and service. I mean, that's why they're going to your restaurant. All right, so make sure this is top notch and really this is the best way of getting good reviews for your restaurant. Now, to get good reviews, this is a little thing I use. These are surveys. So at the end of the meal, you want people to answer a quick little survey. And I've got a little message. This is the little message you can leave on the tables or have your serving staff read out to your customers. And it goes like this. We would like to ask you for your help. Okay, so when you're asking someone for your help, they're more likely to do so. By providing us with your honest feedback. Okay, it's very important that you're asking for their honest feedback uh, rather than just uh, giving you the feedback that you want to hear. Why? So that we can continue to improve our service. And this is something that they would want because, you know, if you improve your service, it's going to improve the service for themselves as well. When you answer two questions, okay, so you're going to let them know that it's only two questions, it's not a long survey, then they're more likely to do it. And then you're going to tell them what to do. Please send the survey to our secure link. Thank you. Now, the secure link, very easy. Put a QR code on your table so that they can scan that using the smartphone and that gets them straight away to your survey. Now, the survey we use is the Net Promoter Score. And the two questions. First question is, how likely is it that you would recommend our restaurant to a friend or colleague? And that's going to be a score. So zero is not likely at all. And a 10, extremely likely. And the second question is, what is the reason for your rating? All right, so you want something very specific uh, that's working really well so that you can keep doing it. And you also want to know if there's something that's really going horribly wrong so you can fix it. And the Net Promoter Score works like this. Anyone who scores zero to six is what we call a detractor. That means they're more likely to tell other people how bad your restaurant is, all right? They're about to whinge to their friends uh, of, the, of the experience they had at your restaurant, all right? So obviously we don't want detractors. Now, passives will score between seven and eight, all right? So they're not going to tell negative things about your restaurant, but they're not gonna rave about your restaurant either. The ones that you do want are promoters. They score between 9 and 10, right? They're going to promote and rave about your restaurant. You want more of those people, obviously. So your net promoter score equals the percentage of promoters minus the percentage of detractors, all right? We're not going to include the passives. So it works like this. So for example, say 60% of your customers gave you a score of between 9 and 10, so that they're promoters. And say another 20% were passives between 7 and 8, and we're not going to include their score. But we'll also include the detractors between 0 and 6, all right? Anyone who scored between 0 and 6 are detractors, so we're going to subtract detractors from your promoters. So in this example I'm using here, we've got 60% are promoters minus 20% detractors gives you a score of 40. 
Now, is that good or bad? Let's have a look. So the highest score possible is going to be 100 uh, positives. That means that everyone is a promoter. Uh, so a good score is going to be anything above zero. So to get an excellent score, you need 50 plus. And if you've got a score of 70 plus, congratulations, your restaurant is world class. Now, anyone who really scores above zero, you want to give them an opportunity to leave a review for your restaurant. To TripAdvisor or Facebook, Yelp or Google My Business. All right, so this happens automatically. You know they're going to give you a positive review. So you're going to make it as easy as possible to send them to one of those review sites so they can leave a positive review for your restaurant. And you can do that absolutely for free. Now, of course, I've got a very, very special gift for you. I'm going to give you an automated marketing system that consistently drives new customers to your restaurant and brings them back again and again. And of course, I'm talking about the restaurant sales funnel. And you can get this. You can download a one-page blueprint which shows you how to create your own restaurant sales funnel for your restaurant. This will create a predictable automated marketing system for your restaurant in just 30 days. And you can get this at vimico.com.au forward slash restaurant sales funnel. And plus, I've got a very special bonus for you as well, like free training by email. So I'll send you an email for each part of the restaurant sales funnel, the brand awareness stage, creating the desire, creating, getting that action of paying customers in your restaurant and then getting the loyalty program for your restaurant. I'll show you everything you need to do in those emails. Okay, so all you have to do is click on the link, get your restaurant sales funnel now. So head over to vimico.com.au restaurant sales funnel. You'll get to this page, click the, uh, the green button there, get your sales funnel now. So just provide your contact details so I can send you the restaurant sales funnel blueprint and also the coaching program for free. And if you need more help, you can book now for a restaurant sales funnel strategy call. Again, just head over to vimico.com.au forward slash restaurant sales funnel. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you like it, give us a review, leave a comment, share it to other restaurant owners. I really appreciate that. This is Jared Kotsky saying bye for now.